Hi everyone and welcome to this video. I'm Glenn and today I'll show you how I painted a brood model from the board game Oswan into the deep wood. If you are new to miniature painting I hope you find this video interesting and helpful. If you have any questions feel free to ask in the comment section below. This paint scheme is based on episode 1 Giant Rats. It's basically the same process applied on a larger scale. If you are interested in following this tutorial, I would recommend watching episode 1 first. In this video I will show you how I went from an unpainted brood model to a painted one. Let's dive right into it. Before painting we need to do some preparation. I made sure to remove all the mold lines on the model. These can be found in all kinds of places, so take your time to remove them all. These can be removed by scraping with a hobby knife or by file. If you find one of these mold lines in the painting process, just take your hobby knife and remove it. And afterwards simply repaint the area with the specific color. I primed the models with Chaos Black Primer. Next I used an airbrush to make a cinephile light effect by applying a white color from above. This can also be applied by using a can of white primer. Either way a white base is required for a later step. I started the painting process by applying hydro or purple through an airbrush, just to speed up the process. If you don't have an airbrush or prefer to use a brush, you should be fine by using Citadel's Nagarov's Knight or a similar color. If you're not a fan of the purple color, feel free to choose any dark color you prefer. We will be adding white into this base color in later steps. After the speed paint is completely dry, I paint the first layer of the fur effect on the brood model. I apply a fur effect by small thin brush strokes of purple all over the model where the purple was applied in the last step. Pay special attention to the head, the small thin brush strokes will create a nice fur effect. When loading the brush with paint, pull the brush backwards while twisting it to create a pointed tip. Also remember to rinse the brush in a glass of water from time to time to maintain its moisture. This is also a good idea when changing between colors. Take care not to allow the paint to reach the very end of the bristles as this can damage the brush over time. I decided to add a bit more hydroil or purple onto the small rats on the broodmother's back to tone down the white and to add more shadows to the recesses. Next I apply bone white to all the open wounds on the brood mother. And if you're wondering about the belly I will cover this up in a later step. After bone white I added a coat of Ulfron grey to all the open wounds. I also apply this paint to the hands. And her feet. Now I add the second layer of the fur effect on the brood mother. Again with small thin brush strokes. I use a mix of serious purple and white, applying this all over the model, following the areas painted in the first layer. Remember to apply this layer to the brood mother's head. I apply bone white to the brood mother's ears. teeth and mouth. The belly and the spikes. Remember to paint all the spikes on the back. 
Moving on to the third layer of the fur effect, using a lighter mix of purple and white. I apply it all over the model where the second layer was applied. At this stage the fur effect should start become noticeable, especially on the head. I use the same purple through all the layers when painting the fur effect. I just add a bit more white to each layer. You can follow and see all the layers I apply, these are added to the wet palette. For the fourth layer of the fur effects, I focus on the most exposed and raised areas of the model, where the light source would hit the model. I imagine the light source coming directly from above, and for that reason I won't be adding additional layers to less exposed areas, like the lower parts or in the shadows of the model. For the fifth layer I move the layering further towards the light source, focusing even more on the exposed and raised areas of the model, especially the head. This means you will add less paint for each layer applied, because the focus will be on the most exposed and raised areas of the model. This is the second last layer and it is applied only to the broodmother's head. And this is the final layer of the fur effect. Applying the last highlights on the broodmother's head, I focus only on the edges. By painting the head brighter than the rest of the model, the head will draw more attention when looking at the model. After all the layers, the brood models should look something like this. The fur effect looks great on the head, the body has a rougher texture so it doesn't have quite the same effect. I will apply a bit of highlights to the fur on the brood model's body later on. Now let's repeat the process on the reds on the brood model's back, starting with a coat of serious purple. From there, I follow the same steps of mixing purple with white, just like I did on the brood model. I add the layers one by one, gradually positioning each layer to the most exposed and raised areas. This way, the brightest layers are placed towards the light source on the small reds, while the darker layers are positioned towards the shadows. The surface on the small reds are also relatively flat, which is also ideal for this technique just like the broodmother's head. When doing something like this, the wet pill is really great for maintaining color consistency. If you need more paints for a certain layer, you simply mix purple and white until you achieve the correct color for the specific layer. The fur is done for now, I apply bone white to the tails on the small reds. And also the paws, the ears, and mouth and teeth. I apply a second coat of Ulfran Grey to all the open wounds. We need a bright surface on the wounds for glazes and speed paints later on. Now I make a glaze with the mix of 8 parts Ruzzi Violet, 3 parts Reckland Flesh Shade, and three parts glaze medium. I apply this to the small rat's tails and paws. Teeth and mouth. The ears 
and also to the brood mother's ears, mouth and teeth, and her hands. I make another glaze with four parts scarlet red, five parts glaze medium, and five parts water. I apply this glaze to the open wounds on the brood mother. Let the first coat dry completely and apply a second coat. Don't forget to cover the wounds on the belly like I did. Once the red glaze is completely dry, I apply a mix of army paint and speed paints, six parts palette bone and three parts sealot yellow. I apply this mixture to the wounds around the edges and in random spots in the wounds. I try not to overdo it in the wounds as I would like to retain some of the red from the glaze. For this step I use Uriel Yellow, Wall of Purple and Bone White. I pick out some of the fleshy textures in the wounds and apply pure yellow or pure purple. Afterwards I add highlights to these colors mixing them with Bone White or pure white. Try to make it random and still keep some of the red from the previous step. The goal here is to make it look infested and disgusting. I use bone white to cover the spikes on the back, the broodmother's tail, and her feet. Next I mix a glaze similar to one I used in a previous step. The mixture consists of 8 parts druchy violet, 4 parts reglan flesh shade, and three parts glaze medium. I apply the glaze to the brood mother's tail her feet and the belly. I also use the glaze between the belly and the fur to make a smooth transition. Remember to stay clear of the wounds if you forgot to paint them as I did. While the glaze dries I clean up the bone parts on the tail with bone white. Once the first coat of the glaze is completely dry, I proceed to apply a second coat. Keep in mind this glaze will be used in a later step. For the next step I make a new glaze which consists of 8 parts scarlet red, 5 parts glaze medium and 5 parts water. I apply the glaze to the teeth and mouth, 
as well as their hands, feet and tail. However, I am careful not to overdo it on these body parts. For the hands and feet, I thin the glaze by applying a small amount and then loading my brush with a bit of water to gently push it around. As for the tail, I apply the glaze in a more sporadic pattern, creating spots to achieve the desired effect. If you happen to apply too much glaze, you can easily remove it by wiping it off with your finger or wiping the brush on a cloth or paper, and then, if needed, you can let the brush soak up the excess glaze. Next, I carefully add white to all the eyes, and there are a lot of them. For this step, I recommend using a nice pointy brush to achieve precision. After the pure white, I apply a mixture of white and yellow to the eyes of the small reds. On the brood mother, I start by applying yellow to the eyes. Then I apply a mix of yellow and white to the bottom half of the eye. Finally, I add a bit more white into the mix and carefully place a spot in the top half of the eye to create a highlight. Ensuring your brush is moist when working on details like this, it will make the process much easier. In this step, I mix 8 parts bone white and 1 part walnut purple. I apply this mix by dry brushing. I use a makeup brush and load the brush with a small amount of paint and then remove the excess, ensuring the brush is almost dry. Before applying it to the model, I tend to test the dry brushing on my hands to ensure there is not too much paint on the brush. By using the dry brushing technique, we will add highlights on the raised surfaces, adding depth and definition to the model. This is done by brushing across the raised surfaces on the tail and hands. I focus on the upper and most exposed parts to the light source, such as the top and the sides of the tail and hands. When I do this, I do it quite lightly, making sure I don't overdo it. This step can be repeated multiple times, so it is important to build up the highlights gradually. I do a bit more clean up with bone white on the bone parts on the tail. I add a wash on the spikes on the back and the bone parts on the tail with Seraphim sepia. After the wash is completely dry, I cover the bone parts on the tail, focusing on the areas exposed to the light source. 
I cover these areas around 70% with bone white. Next, I highlight the same areas with a mix of bone white and Wilfram grey. I cover the same areas again but only around 30%, focusing only on the exposed edges. I proceed to detailing the mouth starting with bone white on the teeth. I add detail to the mouth using Warlord Purple and for highlights I mix a bit of bone white and Warlord Purple. The tongue is covered with scarlet red. I apply a wash of Drucci Violet to the mouth. I apply Seraphim Sepia on the teeth. After the wash is dry, I add bone white to the teeth around 70%. And just like the bone parts on the tail, I highlight with a mix of bone white and oil from grey, applying around 30%, focusing on the tips of the teeth. I will now add more detail to the ears of the brood mother, using scarlet red to create veins. Keep your brush moist while doing this step and paint some small non-straight red lines for a more realistic effect. This technique is also applied to the hands. Her feet and the tails of the small rats. Next, I add the glaze of Drucci Violet, Reclam Flesade, and Glaze Medium, the same glaze used in a previous step. This is applied to the broodmother's ears. The hands. The feet. And the tails of the small rats. <laughs> 
This is to blend the veins into the skin. I add some highlights on the hands with a mix of water purple and bone white, focusing on the edges. I apply bone white to the nails. Added some wash to the nails with Seraphim Sepia. And a final highlight with bone white on the nails. I decided to highlight the fur on the broodmother a bit. I used the same tone of purple which was used as the final highlight on the broodmother's head. I applied this highlight by dry brushing and focus on the body parts most exposed to the light source. I don't add any additional dry brushing on the head of the broodmother or the small rats. Next, I added small details and highlights to the belly. I just mixed Warlord Purple, Scarlet Red and Bone White until I found a color I liked and added a bit more Bone White to the mixture for a final highlight. I finished the detailing on the belly with a wash of Drucci Violet. I covered all the noses of the small rats with a black color. In my case, the broodmother's nose was dark enough. Now let's paint the base. I recommend using a cheap brush instead of your finest one. I'm using speed paints as the base coat and I'll add details and highlights later. First, I start applying palette bone to the skulls and bones on the base. Once those are covered, I proceed to mix oak green, hardened leather and sealed yellow to cover the rest of the base. These paints are applied quite heavily. When mixing the paints, you can create a light green by mixing green and yellow. And for a darker green, mix green and brown. You can even make a lighter brown by mixing yellow with brown. I don't use yellow by itself. It is always mixed with another color. It's pretty straightforward. Simply add the paints to the base and push them around. You can mix the colors directly on the base or in a small container. Either way works fine. The key is to maintain good contrast between the different areas on the base to create variation between the colors. For the pile of skulls, I apply a second coat with a mix of brown, green and pallet bone to blend them more naturally into the environment. After the base had fully dried, I noticed that the pile of skulls looked a bit too light, so I apply a bit more green and yellow into the area. If you encounter any areas that appear too light for your taste, 
don't worry, you can simply add more paints on top of those areas. Now let's move on to the highlights on the base. I'll be using bone white, which works well on the skulls. And in general, I'll be using a combination of Uriel yellow and bone white for the roots. These paints don't necessarily need to be mixed together, simply apply them as you see fit. My approach is to use yellow on the green areas and bone white on the lighter or brown areas. However, I also like to experiment by mixing the paints before applying them, creating a random and natural looking environment. On other bases for this game, I have even used green and brown on the roots. Those colors also work great. Feel free to explore different options and see what suits your style. I think the speed paints work great on the bases for Oathsworn. They blend very well together on the base and also into the board game during play. The key thing in this step is experimentation. Have fun playing around with the colors and mix the paints. Maintain a good contrast between the colors and make it random. Now we're almost done. I go two laps around the base rim with a black color. I apply scarlet red to the small arrow on the base. Before continuing the last steps, I covered the model in a coat of matte varnish to protect the paints and for a matte finish. After the matte varnish is completely dry, I mix 10 parts gloss varnish and 5 parts water. This is applied to the open wounds. Mouth and teeth. And the eyes. This is applied to give these parts a shiny appearance. For this step, I use Yuhu glue to create the effect of saliva between the teeth. It can be a bit tricky, but the result is totally worth it. What worked for me was taking the glue almost directly from the tube and applying it. I covered the whole side of one of the teeth and dragged it down to another tooth, but it slipped as you can see. I went up again and dragged it down one more time, and it even turned out better after it got hold of the other strand. This step requires some patience, but it looks great. Now it's time to add some tufts to the base. I've prepared a piece of plastic with the super glue, and by using tweezers, I carefully dip the tufts into the glue and place them on the base. And with that, the miniature is complete. Let's have a look at the final result. I hope you enjoyed the video and perhaps learned something new. If you found this content interesting, you can support me by sharing the video, leaving a like and comment below.
The idea is to make this an ongoing Ozone series and paint all the miniatures in the game. It's going to be quite the journey, I figured out these videos are not something you produce overnight. I won't be spoiling anything on this channel, I'll put some kind of spoiler warning on future videos. I hope you'll stick around and keep an eye out for the next video. Until then, keep one hand on the miniature and one on your brush.